we're actually starting exactly on time. This is probably a conventional first for anybody ever. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. Um, we're Fire Team Harmony. Uh, just kind of a quick introduction to everybody up here. Afternoon. Go away. <laughs> I'm Twilight. I'm the commanding officer of Fire Team Harmony. I'm Lionel. I do things for the group. <laughs> Mostly being a pain in my neck. And I'm Rarity. I'm the second in command. <laughs> so, welcome to Armor Building 101, where we'll be covering the basics on how we build all of this. Yeah. I just don't mind if it jumps right up. If we go dead. Template and the best way to get your hands on them. The four stages of armoring the building and why the cat is always in the bathtub. I was like, what? That's the most important part. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything you want to wear, he keeps telling you to find them. <laughs> <laughs> so, like anything, we're templates, the, the four basic things. Your computer, of course, printer and paper, lots. Well, honestly, it's going to be, it's definitely always good to have it. Tap a tree sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Scissors and, and tape. All three sort of. So generally, we work with three primary kinds of template building and building our armor. The first is freehanding, which is basically you make them up and draw them, which is really good. Because you want. And if you have to have a really good comprehension of geometry, which, yeah, going back to. Um, Never again. There's going to be a lot of trial and error. Um, second one we do is called layering or sandwiching. And that is really good for building. So and all you really need is just like a blueprint or basically adding layers to a flat slate of foam, which is really good for this, not so much for um, like the 3D armor that we wear. For that, what we have is a program called Pepecora, which basically takes 3D objects, cuts them up, and turns them into 2D templates that you can print out. It is really great. Um, most of the templates you can get for free um, great resources, especially for Halo, is from the 405th. I guess it's dot com. Yeah. 405th. I screwed it up 404 times, too. So <laughs> <get it> right. <laughs> Anything Halo you could possibly want, they'll have. But also, you couldn't hurt to Google whatever you're looking for. Say, say Doom. You got, um, just Google Doom Pathway. The resources are readily available to you. What's up, Ray? What's Halo? <laughs> I think it's a ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> Out of the butt, like an angel's head. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Sonic. Yeah. yeah. So you have Sonic video games, so that's where you can get them. 405. Ah, the only tricky bits is because it is 3D objects. Um, Getting it sized properly can be a bit of a hit miss, and it's kind of trial, learned by trial and error. Um, the four, the six basic functions you're going to have available to you in Pepecora, as you can see here, is you can move the templates. You can also see the 3D object on your laptop, then you do your right, and you can move those around and space them out as you squeeze together. Less paper you use, the better. Scale, like we're talking. These are not built with everybody in the society. That's kind of the best thing. It's not a one size fits all. You can scale them up, scale them down as you need to, depending on your body size. Oh, what did I do? Okay. There we go. And one of the most important ones, especially because you don't know how big that one is going to be measured. Measure which basically lets you choose two different points on the 3D object and figure out how exactly, how much space is in between it. Uh, used to 
be just in the metric system, the recent update, you can now do it in the standard system, so millimeters or inches or whatever your preference is. Mark, are you in this? All right, so that was the basically basic assembly. Did we have any questions on that? Yes, you. Um, okay, um, that is actually a really good question, and it is fairly decent, but the other thing you have to keep in mind is material you're going to be working with, too. So usually if it says there's like 2.3 inches uh, between the arm hole, you're going to want to take in mind that this is also going to be a quarter inch thick, too. Yeah, so you're going to want to have a little bit more space to compensate for that as well. Very good question. Any other questions? Concerns? Uh, what's the best process for scaling something intended for it to my body? Uh, like we said, um, if you know how to take measurements for um, like clothes, that's a good way because you can find out. Like you, um, like these chests, they sit square right where the shoulders meet the um, torso. So it is and on your body. That's a good way to scale it, but yeah. So I just have to take the part that has occurred and make it the same uh, body part. Exactly. Wow. I'm sorry, you in the blue sweater. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, so not only for scale. Like, uh, would, it, would, you, would you recommend it maybe, like, you know, if you're not going to have a measure yourself, that maybe you must find a professional tailor to have them measure. Or somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. kind of good. Or even better yet, yeah, teach them how to teach them how to do it. Alright, no more questions on that? Excellent. Next comes the second stage of assembly. Our primary um, material we use is EVA foam. And you can get that in a number of stores. Um, Home Depot, Lowe's, they sell He's generally in like three by three squares for a four pack. Um, places like Michael's and Joann's also sell them, but they tend to call them cosplay foam or craft foam. But regardless, they're going to be the EVA foam. And they jack up the price too. So they do the price pretty There are some advantages to them. Like um, the Joann's foam doesn't have the texture on the one side, so they're really good for like the layering technique I was talking about. Um, they're also a little bit um, thicker, so a little more dense. So durability. Really, durability, but they're, like if you're building props like this, you don't yeah. have to put um, support because foam bends really easy, which is a great thing and the worst thing about it too. Um, materials, of course, you're going to want a pen or a sharpie to mark your templates onto the EVA foam to cut them out. Generally, I recommend either a black or a blue pen. Never use red. The problem with red is it likes to bleed through, especially when you're painting. So, like, so I think it's on this one. I made the mistake, and you can still see lines that are painting. And that was where I mean just tracing it straight onto the foam. Yeah. Wow. Sit right there. Good boy. <laughs> um, the other thing you're going to need are sharp knives, specifically um, exacto blades or hobby. And no matter how you look at that's your parents if you can use them. Knives are good for bulk cutting because. Um, they're a lot tougher. Um, the thing about them is when they really do and you need to change them, uh, uh, breaking them off is how you change them to get more blade. And that can be a little bit dangerous just because that stuff doesn't care what it comes Like me. 
or do you just hop on the knife? Or as I like to call them, the um, hop foam scalpels, because that's what they basically do. Um, there are, you can do a lot more intricate detail with them. Um, the only disadvantage I'd say about them is they do dull out a lot quicker, and shredded foam is not fun to deal with. Glue, it's not just for eating. Um, you know, in foam building especially, there's four primary types, large cement, super cement, and hot glue. Large cement um, is great because, especially because it's originally used to work and leather, like exceptionally poor, so it rolls together really well. Uh, the only thing is, is a bit of a learning curve because most people realizes that you have to go and you have, when you're cleaning up the arm you have to do a lot less um, seam cleaning because it does a fantastic job of it. Um, I'm super glad to use this for like things like I've already painted it but now there's another way I have to put it on top because we'll keep it on there. The one major trick about it is obviously you pay a lot for a trying to do an entire suit of armor. Um, E6000, or Rubber Cement's Big Brother, <laughs> is another good way. I kind of just because um, it is great for bonding. Once those two pieces are together, don't come undone ever again. I literally had a piece of my heart and it was fine. Sorry. The one major drawback is, is it takes a very long time. 24 hours before it's handled. Or okay to handle that. And of course, the hot glue, which I like to use for scraps personally. Um, it's alright for bombing two pieces of armor, but the one problem is the seamage is kind of poor, and when you have to clean it up with a Dremel, that really goes, especially like sanding bits, you'll go through because all that. Which glue case you buy? I like Elmer's group blue personally, but now this one is kind of hard to teach because it's honestly just you learn it through experience. But basically, getting the most bang for your buck when it comes to EDA foam and how to squish as many of those pieces onto the same piece of foam. Now, for those with a little more money to throw around, this is not so bad because EDA foam is cheap. But those on a tighter budget, yeah. All right, so that was the uh, assembly stage. Did anybody have any questions about that? Make sure I'm understanding your question correctly. You're talking about getting a curve in the foam. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I have a special technique where, where I kind of modify the templates as I put it on, and so it's like basically one solid piece, so there are none of those cut lines. And then I go over with a heat gun, and then I shape it with like like a round ball or something. Oh, yeah, the heat gun's been done for a while. Yes. Yeah. Because kind of the tricky bit with doing it that way that was displayed there is it's really difficult to get those sharp edges out of there. Perfect way to get no seam, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here, if I remember correctly, are a quarter inch thick. Uh, you can, but obviously the thicker it is, the more difficult it is. It's going to be cut through. Um, generally, you might want a thicker piece if you're doing like general Takura armor. You're really not going to be getting a quarter inch. 
Any other questions? Yes, you. So how many pieces of foam did it take to like make a single piece of your armor? Um, generally, I can get a full suit of armor done in about four packs. But that's also, I've got a lot of experience at this, so I know how to cram as much armor into a single piece of foam as I can. The first one I did was closer to six packs. So, for the uh, for putting things uh, on the Eva phone, have you ever made cookies before? Mm -hmm. Or how you or yeah, you know, or your cookie goblin was like, okay, now you gotta put those cookie cutters as close as you can, so we don't have to have you know, overlap as much as you can and everything. That can be good advice, but when you're putting the pieces together, you sometimes might need to cut them at an angle so that they fit right. So if they, you have two square pieces, but they have to join like this, you're going to have to bevel them a little bit. Uh, sometimes you might have to bevel things out a little bit. So you can put it all together on a piece of foam and join the edges so you don't have to cut as much. Uh, keep in mind that you might have to bevel when you're doing this, so you might not want to do it with all of your pieces. Yes. Okay. Any other questions on that particular bit? No. All right, so this one's kind of short. It is the painting section, and the materials you're going to need are basic spray paint, plastic dip, which is great. Um, it helps prevent the paint from cracking, and it honestly helps make the foam not look like foam. Heat gun, which also is good for shaping, but the other thing we do before painting is we heat treat this, which basically means we take the heat gun, wave it over, and it kind of melts the top surface of the um, foam, so basically the paint isn't absorbed into it, and you're using less to make it look like this. Paint tarp or your neighbor's yard or cardboard box or something that's just not going to mess up whatever you're painting on top of. Okay. And last but not definitely not least, patience. This is definitely not a state you're going to want to rush. What if I lived in a cardboard box? And it sounds like you're all set and ready to go. Yay! <laughs> Um, I use like a cheap ten dollar cheap heat gun from Harbor Freight, and it's worked perfectly fine. Just shaping and want to do just because you want to melt because you want to melt both sides. You want to make sure that the top side stays hot enough when you're doing the other side. Or is just no, you're you're Mr. Basic. This is just covering the three basic steps I just told you. Heat seal, plastic dip, paint. And, okay, that was a lot shorter than I it was. Um, any questions about paint? Yes. Okay, so the plastic dip. Yes. Um, is, that, is that anything that has a little bit of paint on it, or does it come in like a spray? Uh, actually, it comes in both, so it depends on your preference. I prefer the spray spray just because you get less streak on it when you're a nice, even coat. Um, the only other thing I would also recommend about that that we did not cover is color also matters. Um, do not use red for the same reason you don't use red pens, because it does like to bleed on top. And for our armor, uh, what we usually do is we'll heat treat the armor, do a layer of plastic dip, and then uh, with each layer, by the way, it's spray a little bit on, wait till it dries, spray a little bit more on you want a little bit because if you try to do it all at once it's going to look like crap it's going to drip everywhere and it's not going to be good so light dusty layers of plastic dip and then when that's done a light layer of metal uh, colored spray paint anything shit on paint on here it'll expose the metal looking paint underneath and it'll be like wow it's like you're in a real battle and then once again just light coats you know a little dusting at a time from three feet away 
it takes like just binge Netflix all day while you're painting outside. Yeah, for like everything. Yes, you. So, but how long does it take like each layer of paint to dry? Uh, that's gonna heavily depend on the weather. Summer, you can protect minutes and we're ready to go. Winter, that one takes significantly longer. Like you would have to spray it and let it sit somewhere warm for a day before it's ready to go again. I run that for hard Yeah, like like twenty to forty minutes, touch it, and if it feels sticky, wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, another question. Uh, for heat, do you mind the the PVA Okay, I know the weird analogy, but I guess like maybe like coating bread. Like, is it possible to like overdo it and like? Oh yes, in fact. That right there is what happens if you leave it on, on there for too long. Any other questions on painting? Yeah. So the last um, armor, and then we're going to start covering some of the little more advanced things, like keeping ourselves alive in these suits, <laughs> is going, of course, strapping the armor up. And there's three primary ways that we do something called independent or integrated rigging, which basically means all the pieces fit onto each other. You don't need any kind of secondary system. Um, this is basically just a This basically goes on just like one. Um, Rarity here is a good example of the independent. You see he's got the biker armor underneath. And everything basically straps onto that. So, <laughs> I'm saying with Twilight, onesies are great. This is great. Uh, multiple suits of armor, and you want to try to keep the cost effect down that on your armor for multiple sets. So, saves you time on straps and buckles. And if I want to get a wheelchair, I should just start elbowing me away in there because I'm wearing actual armor. <laughs> Fortunately, if you forget. Under Armour, you're kind of best where it goes. And of course, the last one is a best of both words, worlds or a hybrid rigging. Um, that's just mix and matching, like maybe you've got the Under Armour, but you don't have the, but you can still attach it to your armor. Yeah. So like my chest piece is attached to this uh, motorcycle armor, but uh, my legs not. And my forearms and everything aren't. So, pop this on, and the back is already glued there. Any questions on? Uh, yes. Mustache man. What is it to strap the the strap onto the armor? Generally, I do not recommend barge cement for EVA foam, or at least trying to glue straps to EVA foam, just because most straps aren't as porous, so they don't have as much gripping power. Um, hot glue honestly works perfectly for me. So the only thing is, you want to really cake it on there. More, you cannot have too much hot glue on a strap. Like a big old loogie. <laughs> But if but if you are going to do that and you're going to a con, bring your hot glue gun with you. For sure. With glue. Also important. I learned the hard way. I learned all that. <laughs> they look like crayons. Because then you took mine. They look like crayons. <laughs> well, we'll see, because I happen to be an idiot. <laughs> you got me there. You got me there. I'm only a half with it. One day I'll be a complete idiot. Uh, so, Rarity, are you a Marine man? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's just farting, silly.
I was a little bit. Um, I don't want to pin something for that, but actually holding on like shoulders or legs. Yeah, it'd, it'd be good for props if you want to put your sword on your back that looks cool, but it's, it's actually a really stupid idea. You know, like some really heavy duty natural magnets for props. Yeah. But, but yeah, I would. Wearing an entire suit held together by magnets would be really extra heavy and probably fall apart anyway. And those credit cards from the five hour <laughs> radius. <laughs> that would be a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> Room keys, I don't think so. <laughs> Get out of here. Good question, though. <laughs> All right, so that covers the four basics. Um, the other thing we kind of have to touch on lightly is to put in the fans that we put in the helmet, which I don't know. If seen from there, but we generally run two lines in there, and that helps keep us cool, and also keeps the um, visor from fogging up, too. We're already cool. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, because you can't strap helmets down, there's also padding in there to stop it from wiggling, too. Um, the other big thing we like to use are what are called accurate speakers, and that basically lets us talk to people when we're actually in the armor and not muffled. And because they're terribly made, and usually in China, they sound all, you know, distorted and everything, like a stormtrooper, which you kind of might want. I, it's actually my real voice. <laughs> and there are some of the resources for, um, Templates or EVA foam or anything else you need. If you want to. I like the review. And that, I guess, we can open up to general questions. Um, I saw your hand go up in the back there first. Um, just kind of a curiosity so not on how you made your armor, but a question for why you did it. Has anyone ever mistook you to say thinking that you were a shiny armor? <laughs> Actually, yes. Which was funny because our shiny armor spark was standing right behind. I know. It was really <laughs> weird. I was like, right here, you know. <laughs> I pointed it out to me, so I'm like, oh, okay, it's actually a color scheme. Also, questions about our team, too, so it doesn't have to be strictly foam or ability yeah. to. I get mistaken for a stormtrooper all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you in the red shirt. Gotcha. For your helmet, do you, is it like all foam, or is there like a Great helmet you have in there. Uh, this is 100% EVA. And, but there are people online who do sell resin helmets. Um, the uh, the benefit of making your own helmet is that it's lightweight. It, it's a lot cheaper. Outside this is probably one of the more complicated parts of the entire suit of armor. The benefit of having a resin helmet is that they are like a deluxe cruiser on top of your head. But <laughs> it... Uh, it looks great, but they, they tend to fog up. They're a lot also heavier too. And I had to my first time I had to cut out parts of it to get my big old noggin in there, and it made it a lot weaker. You might not get, get it uh, custom fit to your head. A fellow in the flannel shirt, this hand up first. What do you use for the visors? Uh, that comes from a very specific vendor on Etsy. Um, at the top of my head. Steven Singer. Not Singer. It's just some, it's just some guy just look up like visor for hate. The only one on there, I think. Yeah, I think he's the only person who makes it. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's something we do not make. But all right. Um, how about you up front? Uh, we actually do keep a list, like, here's a person, um, we also keep track how far along, um, 
it's all on our Discord, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we do have to do. Yep. Yeah, we have like a roster. I think. Which, if you want to join, is on our Twitter page. Yeah, probably closer to two to three hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I would guess about four hundred dollars just to make sure. Okay. 
Yes, you. So my brother did um, some of the Mandalorian cosplay. Oh, nice. And one of the things he said when actually putting on the armor was it was hard keeping it from sliding down all the time, especially thigh and knee pads. Now, he likes for that. Uh, uh, straps are that. Um, generally, what I like to do is it's almost like a suspenders, and then I've got like a belt that attaches to those suspenders, and then I've got like little straps that go down. Those thighs, and that's what eats them up. There's this sweet invention to keep it the pants up called a belt. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we use. Some buckles. Yeah, no, it's honestly experience. Um, first suit of armor can take you somewhere between six. Six months to a year, okay. but that's just mostly trial and error. Okay. Um, 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 that one's honestly depending on your preference. I like to get the hardest stuff out of the way first, right now. So it's either you lock it depending on what I'm. Do that because that's one, maybe two, learn how to do scaling on like that. You'll learn how to cut into the foam and all the other like bits and pieces and decorations of it. That one small piece can help you. Yeah, his hands are actually supposed to be what is the um, side pieces on our thighs. So, so. Yeah, I know what I was like. Oh, it looks like it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I had money. Yes, you in the scarf. How long did it take to put all that on? Uh, speaking of how long is it would be definitely experience. Um, But that's how used to how it goes. Um, you kind of figure it out as you build out, okay, this is how it goes. Versus like somebody builds it for you, guesswork. Yeah, I was rushing and I had everything laid, just was strapped and put it on. Yeah, 10 minutes. But um, it, yeah, usually it takes us about 20 minutes to half an hour because we're also listening to monkey screeches. <laughs> You laugh like joke. I'm joking. <laughs> no, they laugh because they know we're not joking. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I got something else if nobody has a question. All right, are you ready? Lighting. Ah. Uh, LEDs is new. Yeah, the LEDs. How, how do they work? Magic. I bought some. Oh, wow. <laughs> But yeah, now speaking of things about going to grade school, um, both he and I work with electrical systems a lot, so it's kind of second nature to us at this point. But um, if there's something you want to learn, it's just learning about series and parallel circuits. We generally do a lot of parallel circuits to light up our armor, and it's just running a wire through the whole suit wherever we want those lights, and just connecting LEDs to them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the series Speaking of which, power banks, they will save you a ton of money for lighting and running those fans. In case you can recharge them. Yeah. Wow. How many power banks do you have? Like 8,000. Anything under 36, I wouldn't recommend anything under 36,000 milliamps. So. The other thing you're going to want to keep that's got to go fit into your bucket or your chest or wherever. The chest has got quite a bit of room in there to work with, but helmets definitely. Um, I run a pair of 4,000 milliamps in there, and they kind of work as padding as well. So. Oh, and the uh, for the helmet padding, I just would look online for like military helmet padding. It's all Velcro. A little more like Joanne.
or something because they got those um, green foam. Those work really well too. Three minutes. <laughs> um, funnily enough, um, back in 2016, I went to RoniCon and I was in armor for 16 hours. It honestly depends on you and your own tolerances. and Because after a while, you do the The tolerance. Once you get strapped up and ready to go, you will have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so you make sure you like That would be smart, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have totally done that. I it's not awkward at all. But how do you get into the But yeah, it's, it's just part, kind of part of like the, it 
step closer to the painting process. Yeah. And the other one I like to use is, of course, intentionally burning the armor. Um, so, which is great for like plasma burns and stuff. Yeah, like with mine, I, I actually used plastic, it, which was too old. So it cooled everything. And I was like, you know what? But it kind of looks weathered. And it's like, oh, I got hit by a fire or something. So that's why it looks all burned up. And I have this flash. I'm like, oh, I took some damage. Man. You know? <laughs> it's really bad. Um, Putting your gloves up here, so like, what kind of gloves are you using? That or like a shitty thing? Tactical mechanic gloves work good. I just like them because originally I did put those pads on top of them and they like, okay, this looks pretty smart. Also, too, if you have the things around your head, you always be covered on the jet. Oh, the balaclavas? No, we always wear these. Uh, it's more so for keeping sweat out. Oh, that's smart. Yep. There you go. Or, I'm not entirely sure about fursuiters, but we use compression pants and like compression oh. shirts. Sure, like, you are correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we could get some of those ice packs like our fursuiters have, that would be kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. Yes, you, well dressed gentlemen. Compression pants? And shirts? And like stuff under armor? You've literally seen me wear them. You're in our room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mine's literally under armor. Also, get the under armor that cools you off. Yeah, if you actually want like the, the one for heat. Yeah. Like we call yeah. the hot one, but you just kind of remember. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever one makes you not hot. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have all the tools and stepped out in the freezing cold because it's it's not as you a solid chunk of plastic wrapped on your tight like, little sausage body. <laughs> Funnily enough, I think Art on the hard way because the first time he ever suited up, he brought on what they call a bunny suit, I think it's called. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Like it's used for like deep diving so divers can stay warm. And he wore that as his undersuit. He was dying by the mid, mid day. It was his first day. My, my first one was a warp suit, which. Not as good as the under armor and stuff I work with it in a, and tight fitting shorts so underneath so you can cover. Yeah. <laughs> well because if you put on your boxes it bunches up. It doesn't people can kind of tell. Okay. Oh, more questions. Um I like the novelty of it first. The funny thing is, is us getting on it was completely by accident. We weren't even trying to. Um, this was back in 2016 at, um, it was a convention that was in California. It ran for two years and closed. The name is at the tip of my tongue. I'm probably not going to remember for like two hours. It was not Babscon. Babscon's still going. Who cares convention? Pacific Ponycon. That's the one. And Artie Spartan was going originally. And he's like, hey, Twilight, want to come over? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and we were just kind of doing our bit there. Just, you know, we're goofing around, being silly, interacting with the guests. And... We just started joking around with AC Race Fest, and he's like, and at the end of the convention, he's like, hey, we run this thing that's called, called uh, Brody's Rank, which at the time I had was, yeah, we'll get, get in contact with you yeah, on Brody's React. And then we, I think it was what, the season five premiere? This is the first one? I don't know, I'm sorry. Well, you know, my favorite part of being on Brody's React is being the funny part. <laughs> But yeah, that's how we got on Brody's React, completely by accident. Like most of what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we Oh, 
mean like the butt plate and the back thighs? Yeah, yeah we've got ours. Oh, yeah. show it off. It's a lot com more comfortable than it looks because it curves to your natural. So okay. it's almost like you don't feel it's almost like extra cushion when you're sitting down. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I worried about making baby and then like the tech again. It'll have to bring a repair kit. Uh, also, side note, you notice how Twilight's wings are part of the jetpack instead of sticking out? That's on purpose. Stick out wings look really cool, but you can't get through doors. It sucks to be in the middle. Neck of people and they break off really easy. If you're going to do wings, hold it up behind you are in real clutch. And it looks cooler that way, too. Yeah, no, that's honestly more practical. had some that were based off uh, um, Fortnite. Yeah. No. no. So, oh, watch. I forget. Team Fortress. That's what her name was. Yeah. Team Fortress. Two schematic uh, wings. Yeah. Yeah. They looked cool as hell, but they sucked. They get <laughs> I know the counterbalance of these, these chest weighs a ton, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do wings. Simpler than that. Alright, um, so we got about eight more minutes left, so maybe some short questions if anybody's got them. Yay, How many pieces of foam is your chest plate? Between three and eight on the chest plate. Alright, you in the top hat? I just wanted to say one of my favorite bits from Brian Jack that he did was the camera did the of RV Mark One Armor. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. That was completely off. I started like, oh god, what are we going to do for an intro this time, man? And I think the best bit is right at the end when you like knocks into the camera with the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were Oh yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> I think that might have been the first one we were in. No, 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 no. The first one was uh, RV. Oh yeah, the get famous for no little to no work. That sounds real. Yeah, like a silver top coat. Yep. Did one wear silver top coat? Generally, yes. It's honestly depending on your preference. But usually I get away with one coat, so. Yes. It's imaginable, and I haven't really seen any kind of it, so. Must be sleep. Is there a bear? Yeah, there's a bear. 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 Yeah, Hypothetically, yes, but you don't know how much those pieces have moved away either. So it might reset in a way you don't want. So. I'd say just 
use the bars on that dog. It's so much faster and so much cleaner. You know, I, I literally will put it on the two sides of the thing, blast it real quick with the heat gun, so it gets tacky, stick it together, hold it for three seconds, and then set and develop the stuff. Okay, so it's just like glue, right? Like the pain, will the pain get affected in hot temperatures? I've never seen hot glue pick get affected in hot temperatures. The one exception is the one time I used um, a coat of Mod Podge, which is I learned hard way, can and will melt if you put it subjected to high temperatures. Okay. And then it like stuck itself to something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super glue. Super glue is, um, it cures, so it really is not heat sensitive, so. Oh, okay, but the paint's not going to be melting like, like wax melted or anything. The paint's not going to melt. No. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. Um, primarily on websites like eBay. If you just, in fact, if you just Google brushless fans, it will give you all sorts of options. Computer store. Yeah. Uh, sure. yes. Um, how much mobility do y'all have, like, below the waist? Because obviously. Yeah, um, that's where sizing becomes important. Because I've done it so often, I got them sized just right, so I lose little to no mobility. So just as easily. Without these on or with on these on, but stairs are complicated. It shoots up. Yeah, because well, that's less to do with mobility, but more so as your foot gets slightly bigger, so your foot is going to change, especially with stairs. I know it's very big. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else. Is yeah. your biggest tech friend one of the stairs? I'm sorry. Are you looking for armor? I'm not sure. I've never actually tried. I don't. <laughs> That's what guns are for. I guess I'll have to experiment with that and get back to you on it. I you could. I wouldn't want to. No. <laughs> uh, I'm out of the shape even before I put this stuff on. <laughs> I'm 97. Other questions? No? Alright. Thank, Thank you for coming to our panel, everybody. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's already in the...